Good afternoon. It's Tuesday the 30th of June 2015, just after five o'clock. And welcome to a special edition of UK Column News. And well, I'm sure you can see I've been joined in the studio by Beechwood child abuse survivor Melanie Shaw. And uh, Melanie's arrived at the UK Column offices this afternoon and uh, she's kindly agreed to be interviewed in a short interview just to have a look at some of the facts surrounding um, what she has suffered really over the last few years and uh, how Melanie has been treated by the British state. So that's really the introduction. Melanie, thank you very much for coming to see us. It's my pleasure, Brian. Um, what we're going to do is just, um, for people who don't know anything about you, we just give a little summary. And you're recently out of prison. You've been in prison in Sodexo, HMP, Peterborough twice. And uh, you've had a particularly bad time in the prison. But you were released a few days ago after spending about six months in prison, much of the time spent in solitary confinement. Um, tell us how you ended up in prison this last time. Why were you put in prison? Um, I saw rather strange, to be honest, Brian. Uh, I rang the NHS up. I had a cotton bud stuck in my ear and a paramedic came out. Um, he offered me no treatment whatsoever. And I'm used to a good service from the NHS, to be fair. And I thought, to protect my own interests, I will fil film it. And I went upstairs to get my camera. I locked my front door for five minutes. And I said, I'll send this viral on the internet. You know, you can do open heart massage. Why can't you, as a paramedic, why can't you remove a cotton bud from my ear? He asked me to unlock the door, and I unlocked the door. I was then harassed non-stop for seven days by the police. This is Nottinghamshire Police? Yeah, under yeah. Chris Eyre, the Chief Constable. I was, I was harassed horrifically on a daily basis, arrested, had my back door smashed in, they tried to section me. Um, I, d I don't understand it, it doesn't make sense. Right, so you, you were put into HM Prison Peterborough oh, and yes. then a trial took place and I think I'm correct in saying that as far as you knew with the trial, well all you knew was there was a video link between you and the court. There's, there's not actually been a trial though, Brian. You see, I pled not guilty. I was under so much duress and I had a nervous breakdown. I'd rang the police, the Nottinghamshire Force, I'd asked for the Samaritans, they was making me feel suicidal. I ended up self-harming, which looks absolutely horrific. I'd never done that before. Well, the first time I was in Sedex, so I'd never done that in my life. And it just got to the point, they just, I think they just want to dispose of me and put me out of the way somewhere. So did, did you actually appear in a court in person? Well, I pleaded not guilty because I'd had a breakdown. And what was very strange was that was expecting a trial on the 2nd and 3rd of July, but they said that I'd pled guilty. And you hadn't? No, of course not. And you'd only spoken to them by video link? Yes. I didn't right. recognise my lawyer, Digby. He wasn't there. And they said, you're guilty. I said, what about the trial? They said, you can go home now. So you'd, you'd spent virtually six months in Sodexo prison on remand. That was horrific. And then they suddenly say to you, well, you can go home now. Was it that simple? And they then released you? Um, I feel so worn down with what I've endured in that prison again. Because the last time I was in the prison, I did speak to Richie Allen. Yep. Is it Richie Allen? Richie Allen, yeah. And I spoke about the treatment at the hand of the governor, Nick Leader, at Sodexo. And, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but what they did to me, and I saw what they did to the other girls in that prison, it was as if they had it in for me. But I, what I don't understand, Brian, is my, I had a function in life. 
before I was so blue on Operation Daybreak. Right, we're going, to, we're going to come on to that, Melanie. So just just to talk about or finish off, really, the bit about the prison is that the, this last time that you were in prison, where you were in solitary confinement for virtually the whole time, you said virtually six months or bar two weeks. Just locked in a, in a cell. They, they deny me medication. I was sexually molested by SO Sarah Duguid. I was yeah. punched in the face by Officer Ian Hayes. I was denied food, I had the water turned off, I had to drink out of the toilet, stale water. If I didn't put my hands on the bars while they wore paper suits and I turned around, they denied me my food. Um, I wasn't allowed to see a doctor, all my mail was stopped, I wasn't allowed any visitors in there. But I'm not saying there was all bad there, there wasn't all bad. No. The no. head of the female prison, Jo Davidson, she's a good woman and so is Kev Graham. Okay. And Officer Lorraine Lambert, I mean, she's special. Right. So you had pretty hard treatment. The first time you were in prison, of course, you had your very bad leg ulcer. And oh, what treatment did you get in prison for that leg ulcer? Well, my doctor, my GP of 20 years, Mark Stevens, he'd been, um, we'd found Manuka honey along with antibiotics to be effective treatment. They started hiding. The dressings, I was using dishcloths and ordering honey off the, off the canteen pod. Right. And it had virtually healed up, but it started rotting again. And I mean, the first time I was in, I got, I, I, there's members of the public sending in mycidinal manuka honey. Um, magnetic leg braces, you know, from the circulation issues. Yeah. Um, so with letters and return postage, if Melanie can't have this, can, can, can you please return it to me? And they would just throw it in the bin. Right. I mean, luckily my leg has healed now. Right. I've been back so, under my GP and, you know, but my leg has healed. Okay. Now your, I'm going to call it your journey, not a nice journey, but your journey, which ends up with you in prison on two occasions in, in Sodexo prison in Peterborough, but the journey starts with you blowing the whistle on child abuse. That not, does. A, not only your own child abuse, but that, that other children were experiencing Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham. Now, yes. for some of the audience today, this is, this is a very hard subject. So we're just going to keep it very simple, but yeah. you, you experienced some terrible abuse yourself, but you also saw things happen. It happening was what I saw they did to the boys. Just, okay, <laughs> just tell us what, what, you, what, what was happening to the younger boys. The man that did it, he's dead now, Mark Lucia Griffiths. So they was put on minibuses and taken down to London. He put Freddy Krueger masks on and buggered all the boys in the basement and raped us all. Right, okay. And they killed, they killed children there. Right. Norman Nort. Right, we're just, right, let's just stay on the basic facts. I should be right. dead. But you're not, which is very good. <laughs> and in 2011, you went and reported what you knew to Nottinghamshire Police. And my life's been destroyed ever since I did that. Right. And I just want to, I don't want no child to go through and care what we did in them institutions. They're terrible. Right. So have you had any support from any of the institutions in Nottingham that say they're there to help? Have you had support in the community from Nottingham Social Services? I contacted NAPAC. They wouldn't speak to me because it was a live investigation. Um, my MP, Chris Leslie, he's been very good. Right, he, he used to write to you in prison. Yes. Right. Sue Johnson. Okay. And she, she ran a charity called POW right. in Radford, and she, she gave me a lot of support, and she continues to be there for right. me. Do, do you think that Nottinghamshire Police have been your friend and supporter. When you came forward as, a, as an abuse victim yourself and a whistleblower, was, were Nottingham police there to help you? How did you feel that they treated you? I'm not going to tell lies now. I started off with 
we're, we're just going to talk in Am general. Am I allowed time. to mention names? No, I think for this programme, you just talk in general about how well, it's gonna, it's Well, all I'll say is that my handler now is Chief Superintendent Helen Chamberlain. They don't respond to phone calls. Yeah. Um, and I've just had to run away from Nottingham. Why, why have you done that, Melanie? In the clothes that I'm stood in, Brian. Why, why have you run away? Because the police phoned me, har harassing me, saying we're outside your house. Where are you? We will come and pick you up. I said, what is it about? So I can contact a lawyer. We can't tell you because of data protection, but we'll come and get you. Yeah. So I travelled for 24 hours on the train and the only place I knew to come was to see you. Right. And, 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 and so I, cause I, I don't, I've been okay while I'm here, but they've stolen my son Damien right. as well. And do I don't know what to do now. I do, do, I do trust some people, they're not all bad, but I don't know. The thing is, without saying too much about Operation Daybreak. Well, that operation's going on, so we don't, we don't need to talk in detail about it's a, it. It's an open secret for 25 years. As to what was going on? At Beechwood, think... Beechwood was something different. It's not go, it doesn't go on everywhere. Beechwood was unique in, in a horrific way. Right. And all that I want to do is, if I've got one dream, there's no support network for the victims, and several have recently died. Right. The brother of a close friend of mine has just died. And, okay. and there is a child abuse inquiry going off in our country, and the victims aren't getting a, a voice. No. Melanie, I, I'm going to say it's been very brave of you to come on to UK Column today and tell us what you've told us. You may think that you've only given us a tiny bit of, of what you know and what was really going on in Beechwood Children's Home. And of course, Beechwood was one of several other children's homes just in the Nottingham area. The same pattern is followed across Britain today, but we can do more on another occasion. So I'm going to I'm going to say this, thank you very much. There's one for thing I want to say. OK. And I do have a sense of humour, Brian. Okay, I am traumatised. I have got a terrible cold sore. Yeah. But Lorraine Lambert, I love you. Will you marry me? Okay. Everybody knows. Melanie. HMP Peterborough, she's a lovely officer. Well, that is a good place to end. That we know that, of course, in any organisation, there are always good people. So I'm going to say how remarkable that Melanie Shaw, who has endured two periods in prison, not for being a vicious criminal, but simply having the courage to stand up as a child abuse survivor to tell the truth, not only about her own abuse, but that about other children. And what has been her reward from David Cameron's conservative government? It has been for her to be pressured and bullied and harassed and ultimately to be put in prison uh, trials held in closed courts, better known as star chambers. And as you've heard from Melanie there from her own mouth, she didn't even appear in front of a jury, but is simply on the end of a video link and was in any case denied the legal representation which she wished. This is the true state of child abuse in Britain. It can be no accident that this is going on. It is going on with the full uh, collaboration of all areas of government. And of course, at the moment, we have the remarkable situation where the head of the Crown Prosecution Service, Alison Saunders, has been able to protect uh, Lord Janner uh, from appearing in court. That, that decision recently overturned, we know, so there's going to be a finding of facts. However, isn't it remarkable that Alison Saunders could put such effort into effectively shielding Lord Janner, whereas for Melanie Shaw, 
um, somebody who has endured unbelievable abuse, not only at the hands of her own family, but then under the so-called care of children's services in Nottingham, that Melanie Shaw can be put in prison twice, denied medical treatment, and as you've also heard directly from Melanie, that she could be put in solitary confinement uh, for the best part of six months. Brian. This is the unbelievably cruel treatment from the British government today. It's up to all of us who now know what is really going on to make the effort to shout, to petition, to demonstrate, and above all, to directly challenge the government ministers who are responsible for this terrible state of affairs. We'll leave you there to think about that. We'll have a normal UK column news at one o'clock tomorrow. Melanie, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for letting uh, me tell the truth, Brian. It's been our pleasure. You, you will be back with us, I'm sure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye bye.